King George is back in the country after conquering the world. He has had an amazing start to the season, claiming his 18th World Championship in New Zealand and then heading to South Africa to win the Pan-African Cup. But there's no rest for the gifted and as soon as he recovers from the jet lag, there's work to be done on his game shoot in East Sussex. Corvids are a big problem. They predate on young game birds and there are hundreds on what's left of the stubble from the cover crop. So what's the plan? We've got a massive crow roost the other side of the valley and for the last, oh I don't know, three weeks there's been quite a lot of crows using here. Uh, the game crop's about to be ploughed in um, for next year and um, I thought we'd just come take advantage of three hours on the crows uh, before the pheasants start nesting and all the young birds start, you know, getting into the nest because there's no question crows, jackdaws and that sort of thing do more damage um, to nesting birds than uh, most other animals put together so you know if we can kill 30 or 40 on here I feel as I've had a good afternoon. George is being joined today by Darren and Andrew from Idleback Chairs. George bought one of the original designs but there's a new one which he's keen to try out. I'm a great believer in them. I think they're, they're fantastic chairs. You know, when you're actually sitting on it, you get full movement. Once they're fully extended, you've got a, a nice height, a back to it. So you're sitting on the chair and wherever you want to turn to, you know, you can. And, and feet movement with shooting is key. It's 70% of, you know, what goes on. So being able to move your feet and turn your body to where you want to shoot means you can still shoot sitting down. And, you know, it's a... Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a comfortable thing to shoot off and it keeps you a bit more lower in the hide. And for crows, you know, you want to be as low as possible, really. George has set up Which, uh, Team Idleback with some pigeon shooting at one end of the field. We are at the other in a hide he established a few days ago. So are there rules when it comes to decoying crows? I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any real rules apply crow-wise. Uh, you know, they are the most wary bird that you've got. You know, I, I think they're the most wary bird that you can shoot. But if you get plenty of decoys out there and you've got your hide set up cor correctly, they're also the dumbest. I've just got four, um, you know, crow decoys. And uh, I've got one dead bird here that I put on a flapper just to create a little bit of movement so that if they are coming into the decoys and they just see a little bit of movement, um, it keeps their mind looking at that rather than looking at me. Also joining today is sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam, who is doing a feature on the maestro. Thankfully, George has built a hide to cater for the entourage. With the decoy pattern set out, George gets out his precious Parazzi, which he's had ever since he signed up with the Italians. And of course, he's using his favourite game ball cartridges. I've got some black gold. I just, you know, I don't shoot anything too heavy a load. Uh, I've got some black gold that we had, uh, that our clients were using during the pheasant season, and uh, I should be using those today. Normally, my preferred choice is Pigeon Extremes, which I use for everything, but I want to use these, these uh, uh, shells up. Three left over. Yeah, well, pretty much really. George is a countryman and a sportsman. So where would he rather be? In New Zealand winning his 18th world title or in rural Sussex on a beautiful spring afternoon? I don't think there's... I don't think there's any... Uh, any thrill that beats someone turning around and saying you're world champion. Um, you know, there's only a very few people that have have managed that, you know, in its entirety, and I'm very privileged to have done it more than once, and, and you know, I never look, never look away from that fact. But the countryside's my first love, and if I'm gonna do something, I'd rather do it in the countryside with a wild animal, pit my wits against something. It's a hunter in you, really. Right, down to business, and the shooting starts slowly. George wants to get a few just to fill out the pattern. You're saying you wanted to get a few more dead birds to increase the decoy pattern. You think that'll, that'll improve things? It's like anything. They're a gregarious bird. 
and uh, you know there's a lot of a lot of things is people when they go pigeon shooting um, you know they go pigeon shooting and there's been five or six hundred pigeons on a field um, and they go out there and they put their half a dozen decoys out and expect the pigeons to decoy into them straight away well it doesn't quite work like that because when a pigeon comes here he's used to seeing five or six hundred pigeons here yeah. you know consequently the same here there's been three or four hundred crows on here for a few weeks so when the crows come back here they're looking to see three or four hundred crows on here otherwise they're slightly wary because they think hang on a minute you know why is there only eight or ten all of which are static not moving so I've got two coming down the hedge here oh hang on straight over it. Get them committed, then we'll have it a lot easier. Oh! <laughs> he didn't like that. It's going to tower right above us. Oh, here we go, bro. Another one hit hard. He starts to get the birds, but George thinks the crows are now suspicious with dead ones lying on their backs. He and Dom head off for a tidy up. They say birds of a feather flock together. So is there a problem with George adding both crows and jackdaws to the pattern? They've been feeding together for you know, a long period of time, as I was talking about earlier on, so they're used to seeing some of each there. Uh, it's just, you know, they, it's quantity rather than just a few. And I always put a couple I always put a couple there with their wings out just to indicate a little bit of movement. But, uh, you know, by picking those six or seven up, everything we had coming here that I'd shot was upside down on its back out there, so not really going to be conclusive to getting more come in. As well as knocking over a few birds, George is also finding plenty of sport knocking Team Idleback's efforts in the pigeon hide. There is one right over the magnet. In fact, he's going to sh the decoy on the magnet if he's not careful. No, they still didn't get it. George is getting worried about the size of your bag. Uh, how many have you got so far? Earth to Idleback. <laughs> We're trying to concentrate, you ain't got time to be f***ing chatting. George is getting really worried because he's heard that many gunshots. Uh, how many birds have you got? I thought the competition was to see how many shots you could take. <laughs> well, I definitely won that. definitely winning that one. <laughs> I think we've about ten so far. Okay, that's not including the decoys, asking. Is that including the decoys, George Osborne? <laughs> Obviously. From the Pigeon Preservation Association. <laughs> <laughs> Best you old boys stick to making chairs, I think. Having improved relationships between North and South, George marches on and keeps hitting birds that might as well be in low orbit for other guns. However, it is apparently easier when there's less wind. The one thing about shooting on a still day as opposed to shooting on a windy day. is the lines are straight. So you can kill stuff not so a bit further away. Uh, you can kill them further away because it's easier to read the line of what you're shooting at because there's not so much variation as there is in the wind. You know, I come through everything from behind, touch it, pull the trigger and keep the gun going. I mean. You know, that pigeon there was a good 60, 65 yards and, uh, you know, it was hit right in the head 
Um, but it, it, on a day like today, I'd be confident of taking that shot every time, purely and simply because the, it's a stable line. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to take long shots on quite so much in a wind because of the variation in, you know, the bird's only got to tilt its wing and it's gone three or four yards in in a direction. Um, so, you know, that is a is something to to be you know to note. Um, but uh, but on a still day, it's you know it's nice. I mean, we've you know a lot of what you've got on here has been 60 yard plus shots. I expected them to commit a little bit better than they have, but they they haven't really gone that. There's one there I could have shot, but uh, I meant shooting over your head. But then it also seems pretty straightforward shooting one-handed while on the mobile. Um, yeah, uh, can you give me a call when you get the message, please? Thanks, bye. I absolutely sent a pattern that first shot. It nearly plucked it. <laughs> give me a smile, for goodness sake. Well, I can't believe it's gone in the tree over there. I'm going to pick it up in a minute. Oh. Please do not try this at home unless you are a world champion. Don wants to hear more pearls of wisdom from the master, but there's always another high bird to interrupt the flow. That's really interesting, George. When you say about you come through everything from behind, um, what you're saying is that it's the speed of the swing rather than the amount of lead. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like uh, if you shoot a rifle, you shoot at a target, don't know. Hang on. Dom gives it another go. Now, you stopped halfway through basically the Did secret he? of uh, successful shotgun shooting. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> leave them hanging. Yeah. So you were saying that um, it's similar to rifle shooting, you have an aim point, and that is the head of the bird or the front of a clay target. Exactly I'm sorry, the same. I'll have to stop you there when I've got one coming. <laughs> Sorry, I did have one incoming. <laughs> no, Jeremy Paxman never has coming. to put up with this, does he? Oh! Oh! Please tell me you got that in. Oh! I don't care what happens now. How far do you think that was? Well, the first one was about 70 yards. I don't know how far the second one was. I wouldn't like to guess, but I can tell you now, he is a long way. Oh, I don't care what happens now. OK, Dom, why not change the subject? See if that works. So obviously we know that you've had a busy start to the competition year, George, but that literally started right off the back of the last drive of the last day of the game shooting season, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Uh, oh, hang on. Never mind. If you want George's undivided attention today, you need to be dressed in black and flying about 70 yards above his hide. So it's all starting to work for George. How is the idle back performing? Well, it's got a, a cushioned seat on it, which is fantastic, especially when you've got an arse as big as mine. Um, it's a lot more comfortable. Uh, it's got a good swivel system to it. You know, the, 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 the thing I like about the guys is that uh, they're not doing something and doing it their way and their way is the right way and it's the only way. They're actually getting out, getting involved in the field um, and trialling stuff and, and, and asking people their opinions on it, which is the right way to go because, you know, if you want a product to succeed, you've got to have a product that the shooters want and the shooters can use. It's time to call it a day. The bag looks pretty respectable given our late start. Handy for George as he has plans for a few of the birds. Uh, crows don't like having, you know, where they're feeding, their mates hung up by their feet. Uh, hence the reason why when you're travelling throughout the country, you know, quite often you'll see fields of new sown barley or peas or whatever with uh, crows hanging up upside down on them. And um, what I do is, if I have a day like this, I keep, I keep some uh, crows back and put them in the freezer. 
and then uh, if I've got uh, if I've got somewhere where crows are doing the damage, I haven't got to go out, you know, and spend time if I'm in the middle of the clay season or whatever, I can just go and hang stuff up there straight away. So I've got them in stock. Team Idleback has also had an enjoyable day, even though George thinks they should stick to making chairs and not pest control. Uh, we're constantly uh, looking to, for ways and means of improving it and we always listen to feedback, all the time. And I can't teach this guy anything. Um, you know, I'm, I have a great deal of respect for him and, you know, anything that I can learn or pick up from him, um, you know, we listen to everything. So uh, whether it's George or um, just a guy on a, one of his uh, trade stands sort of thing, uh, we listen to everyone. So, um, and then we go away and try and incorporate any ideas that come along. So we've now got pigeon chairs. Um, we've, we've also just done a new version where you, you can detach the front end very, very simply by the removal of one screw from the original rifle chair. Um, so that's a new one just after we designed that just after Newark and um, so you know we're, we're constantly trying to evolve things on it. It has been a real education shooting crows with George today and although we never really got the definitive answer of how to shoot the digweed way we did discover that he is on fire in 2011.